Hey guys, over the last couple of weeks, I've seen more and more videos about the Apple Card, as Apple has started to ship them out to people through their invite-only rollout. Being curious, I decided to see if I could sign up on Apple's website to get an invite of my own. And today, I got my Apple Card. In this video, I'll take you through my application process, the unboxing, and my first impressions and use of the card so you can determine if the Apple Card is something for you. Signing up to get notified of your invitation was pretty straightforward. I just went to Apple's Apple Card homepage and clicked the Notify Me button at the upper right hand side of the site. In the box that popped up, I just entered my Apple ID email address and clicked Submit and that was it. Now I'm not sure if there is any criteria or requirements they look for, but I assume they're using the allure of the invite only mantra just to get people to apply. Before I forget, please be sure to subscribe and hit the bell button to get notifications when I post new content. After only a couple of days, I received my early access invitation through email letting me know that I could apply. Keep in mind though, you have to be running iOS 12.4 and your phone can't be jailbroken. To quickly note, I have heard that most people who apply with at least a credit rating of 660 or above should be approved, making this one of the most accessible lines of credit that I know of. As soon as you get the invitation email, the Apple Card should be available to apply for in your Apple Wallet app. Simply go into the Wallet app, Click continue to add a card and you should see an Apple Card option, assuming you received the invitation email. This process could change once the public rollout happens. When you click on the Apple Card option, it should start the process for you to apply for the card. Keep in mind that this card is issued through Goldman Sachs and interest rates could vary depending on your credit rating. For those people with lower credit scores, watch out for the high interest you could potentially get hit with. Like some of my other more widely used cards, the Apple Card has no fees, and cardholders earn daily cash back at a rate of 3% for goods and services purchased directly from Apple, 2% daily cash back on Apple Pay purchases, and 1% cash back on all other purchases, which isn't the highest cash back promo available, however, you do get it daily. Once you click continue, my information was already pre-populated for the most part. I just had to complete and update the missing and outdated information. At this time, I do also want to let everyone watching to know that this is not a channel for financial advice and that I am in no way qualified to give any kind of financial advice. Now get this, the information required does seem to differ from person to person. I have seen and heard of instances where an ID scan was required, but in my case it wasn't. So I'm not sure if it's based on your credit rating, your credit worthiness, your spending habits, or even the phone that you're using. All I had to provide was my name, my date of birth, my address, and then I had to verify my information by submitting the last four digits of my social security number, and then finally providing my annual income. I do want to warn that this is a hard credit pool, so you will see a hit on your credit report. And once that information was submitted and I acknowledged by clicking agree, my application was processed with a decision in less than one minute, outlining my credit limit and my APR, which will probably differ for most people. Once you have reviewed the offer, you can choose to accept or decline the offer and then add a virtual version of the card to your Apple Wallet to start using immediately. At this time, you'll probably get a number of emails throughout the process notifying you of account updates. And then you'll go through a couple more screens telling you more about the Apple Card itself before finally needing to verify your address once more. And then you'll see a digital representation of your card right before it is added to your Apple Wallet.
The Apple Card Analytics page is very clean. It clearly shows you your credit balance and your spending limit, as well as a high-level view of your spending categories. There's also a section where you can get the latest updates or even connect and contact support if you need it. You can easily dig deeper into your balance and payment due date and then use the easy slider to make a payment. You will need to add a bank account though in order to pay directly through the app itself. The virtual version of this Apple Card sits nicely in your wallet and is easily accessible at any time that you need it. If you're looking for more details about your Apple Card, you can click on the button at the top right hand corner of the screen. Here you'll be able to see your credit limit, available credit, and APR. You'll also be able to find your credit card number here in case you need to make an online purchase using a vendor that does not accept Apple Pay. The shipping time according to Apple is 5 to 7 business days once you complete and are approved for the Apple Card. So once you're done, all you have to do is wait and then you'll get the physical card. FedEx seems to be the courier of choice for the Apple Card and it is surprisingly fast. My card was delivered in two days, or maybe it was three. All I know is that it was faster than expected. The Apple Card comes in a plain no frills packaging, I assume for security purposes. It actually comes as a package inside of a package inside of a package, if that makes any sense. Once you tear away the outer packaging and slide out the inner packaging, you'll expose the nicer and the more minimalistic Apple style packaging for the card with a cutout Apple logo on the front cover. The case is a smooth and durable cardboard material similar in thickness to a standard credit card and about the size of a passport book. The inside color scheme matches what you would expect to see in the app as you charge things to the card and reflects the color scheme of the different spending categories. If you look closer, you'll notice that there's a diagram and instructions to activate your card. In order to activate your card, the directions were to just wake your iPhone up and hold it near the card, like you were connecting one of your iPhone accessories. This did not work for me, and after several attempts and trying a number of times, I ended up just going into the wallet, selecting the card, clicking the activate button, and then placing the phone next to the card, which then worked to activate it. I decided to leave much of the footage in of me attempting to activate the card to demonstrate that it wasn't as easy as it should have been. Maybe it was just my card, or maybe it was just my iPhone, or even, maybe it was just me. Who knows? Once activated, your card is immediately ready to use. Using the card is easy enough and anything you purchase appears almost instantaneously in an easy to understand and read format. Once the transaction is confirmed, the color of the card will also change based on the categories of the purchase you have made. Apple is pretty much gamified spending, which I'm not sure is a good thing. If you click into the transactions, you can see more detail around what you spent, such as the amount and time, as well as the geographic location of where the place is. In general, it's a much easier and more interactive understanding of your spending than most typical credit card statements. The Apple Card, as mentioned previously, is designed to be primarily used via Apple Pay, whether it's online or in stores, and as you can see, offers rewards anytime you use the card. In my case, I got 2% by using Apple Pay through the wallet app at the gas station, I got 1% for my order through Favor using the card number, and any purchase through Apple would typically give 3%. It's not the best rewards program out there, but Apple does pay those out on a daily basis, which is not too bad. Probably the best thing about the Apple Card is the card itself. It is definitely premium and of the quality you would expect from higher limit exclusive cards from other banks. It's probably one of the nicer looking cards that I have, and probably the reason most people would use it. The card is clean and only has your name on it, making it pretty secure and safe to use and carry around. 
I only have one other metal card, and that's my Amazon Prime card. But when placed next to this card, made of titanium and laser etched, does not even compare. Most other videos I've seen about the Apple card indicate that it is thicker than a traditional credit card. However, in my case, it is pretty much the same compared to all my other cards. The only difference being that the Apple card does not flex or bend. It is a very durable and well-made card with a very nice design. I will definitely give that one to Apple. This card may not be for everyone. Its appeal lies in the fact that 1. It's made of titanium and has a nice look and feel. 2. It has a nice app and interface to easily understand the transactions you make. And three, it's a great talking piece and probably going to be used as a status icon. The rewards definitely don't compare to other more prominent credit cards offered by other banks. Probably the best feature of the card is if you misplace your card or if some unauthorized user gets your card details, you don't need to request a replacement card. You can simply request a new card number through the app and that also replicates onto the card itself. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Apple Card. This card might not be for everyone, but I'm probably going to use it for my primary card. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to like the video and subscribe. Be sure to also hit the bell button to get notified when I post new videos. See you next time.